Did you know that the map Pearl actually takes place in an alternate universe? Have you ever wondered what secrets hide in plain sight as you play a match in Valorant? Do you ever think that these maps just might be more than mere battlegrounds? Join us today as we dig deep and try to uncover what exactly is going on in Valorant's enigmatic world. Before we go on, it would help us out a lot if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so that we can keep making videos like this. Utopia a place of ideal perfection. This is usually what is used to describe a futuristic world where there are no problems and everything exists in perfect harmony. Dystopia, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. Valorant is set in the near future, where human beings have made significant advances in science and technology. So, does this mean they live in a utopia? Well, not exactly. There is hidden evidence in these maps that tell a different story. Our first stop is Ascent, the one that started it all. Ascent is actually the first map ever made by the developers of Valorant. It's an area that was created after the events of Duelists, the game's official launch cinematic trailer. Set in Venice, Italy, we see that Phoenix is chasing after Mirror Jet. Although at this point in time, he doesn't know about the existence of their alternate versions. After a fierce encounter, Mirror Jet detonates a spike causing the whole city to float up in the air, leaving a huge crater on the ground. On the surface, Ascent looks like what you'd imagine a small town in Venice would look like. There are markets, cafes, and even a boathouse. But if you look closer, there might be a few secrets hiding in plain sight. Some fans believe that Ascent is actually a metaphor for the destruction that war and violence can bring. Others believe that Ascent could be a reminder of the human spirit's resilience in the face of great adversity. All these could be true, but the biggest and weirdest thing we found in Ascent is a mural in B Lobby, showing a giant octopus holding a key. In our last video, we talked about a theory that Omen used to be a giant octopus. See where we're going? To add fuel to the fire, there's also a hidden message on one of the buildings in Italian that translates to, the truth is out there. Could these be clues saying that Omen might actually be the key in unraveling all the mysteries and conspiracies in this world? Or are they just Easter eggs that Riot snuck in to mess with us? These are just theories anyway, right? Man, Riot sure knows how to play their cards. Before we move on to the next map, let's take a look at the range since it is technically a part of Ascent. In case you forgot, this is actually where the game's tutorial takes place. It's basically a training ground where you can practice your aim or simulate planting and defusing a spike. But what if we told you that this place has a dark and disturbing past? Stay tuned. So the range is based on the island of Poveglia near Venice, Italy. Things don't seem so dark until you find out that Poveglia was once a quarantine station for those suffering the plague for more than 100 years. Imagine all the people who died horribly because of disease during that span. An estimated 160,000 people died in this area according to Atlas Obscura. Not only that, it also housed a mental asylum that was filled with patients until it was abandoned in 1968. While there is no concrete confirmation from Riot about this, you can definitely see the similarities. Since Ascent is actually set in Venice, it wouldn't be a stretch to think that the range is actually Paveglia. In fact, you can actually see beds that strongly resemble hospital beds tossed aside in one of the training areas. Think about that the next time you're warming up by practicing your headshots on hapless training bots. The range isn't the only map with an interesting past. This time, let's go all the way to Russia in an Arctic archaeological site filled to the brim with radionite. We're talking about Icebox. Just as its name suggests, Icebox is a place encased in snow with temperatures going as far down as minus 23 degrees Celsius. It's so cold here that researchers have to wear a special suit to help them perform their task. This map looks like your standard research facility, with tons of crates containing radiant moving around and several workstations for Kingdom's employees. There's even a kitchen area with leftover pizza from when the company had a party for Paul being the employee of the month. Great job, Paul. So what exactly makes Icebox interesting? 
Well, the biggest point of interest here, aside from Paul's true identity, is the ancient Japanese ship frozen in a mountain of ice containing samurai suits made of radionite. This explains Kingdom's involvement in its excavation. But wait, wasn't radionite only discovered before First Light? If that's the case, then how did people from ancient Japan have access to radionite? We'll get to that in a bit, keep watching. Yoru actually reclaimed one of the masks from an armor set belonging to his ancestor. With its radionite properties, it helped him enhance his abilities. When Yoru was investigating the ship, he described it being in a state of temporal anomaly. He said that there are signs of dimensional scarring on the ship, which indicates it might have been from a different timeline, or perhaps even a different universe. In a voicemail to Brimstone, Yoru recounts an experience while using his powers on the warship. He said that he fell into a space that didn't let him go from A to B, instead it felt more like now to then. He also mentioned a familiar voice calling out to him, but didn't get the chance to answer. What exactly did Yoru see while on a rift at the ship? Who is this mysterious voice calling out to him? These are questions that don't have answers right now. However, this feels like a topic worthy of a video on its own. Let us know in the comments if you want a video covering Icebox and its many secrets. From Russia, we'll head to Lisbon, Portugal, where the map Pearl is set. Despite being set in a real-world location, you'll notice that Pearl looks nothing like its real-world counterpart. That's because the whole area is part of a city that is completely submerged underwater covered by a state-of-the-art geodome. In fact, Pearl is actually in an alternate world, Omega Earth to be exact. In the shattered cinematic at the start of Episode 5, we get a glimpse of the Valorant Protocol's first mission to Omega Earth. Killjoy, Neon, and Reyna are all all investigating a teleport terminal that Fade used beforehand in an attempt to get intel about where they store their radionite. This mission goes completely wrong as the team was caught almost immediately upon arrival. What's a little fishy here is that how come Fade was able to go to this area and leave unscathed? Could they possibly have been set up? At this point, we don't know who to trust anymore. We then find out through Killjoy's investigations that Kingdom Industries, Kingdom Corporation's Omega Earth counterpart, have full control of everything inside the dome, including weather, climate, and even reality. But the biggest discovery made here is that Omega Earth uses radionite to power their life support system. We don't know what kind of disaster happened for this city to be covered by massive amounts of water. What we do know is that there is evidence tying everything back to the events of First Light. Some say that Pearl is housing a massive radionite artifact that can control water. Some even say that Pearl is actually the entrance to Atlantis. It's a silly theory for sure, but with everything happening, we wouldn't be surprised if it were true. Pearl certainly has a lot of stories left to tell, and we can only wait as more hints and details are revealed. Last but not the least, we have to mention Fracture quite possibly the most intriguing map in Valorant. Aside from being different from the other maps in terms of its layout, Fracture has a tragic backstory. The building that we get to interact with in Fracture is called the Everett Lind Facility, located in New Mexico, USA on Alpha Earth. Here, Kingdom Corporation and Kingdom Industries are secretly collaborating with each other to study the nature of radionite, its potential to create new universes, and biome acceleration. There's a teleporter inside that allows scientists and researchers from Omega Earth to enter the facility. They were working on a large radiant collider that accelerated radionite particles at very high speeds to study its properties. The tragedy occurred when Vincent Fabric, better known as Chamber, infiltrated the facility and destroyed the collider with help from his Omega Earth counterpart. This caused a massive explosion that literally fractured reality and killed most of the people present at the facility. Fracture is the only place so far that literally bridges Alpha and Omega Earth without having to use any form of teleportation. The biggest theory here comes comes from the question as to why exactly did Chamber cause the explosion. Chamber is a very mysterious agent whose motives are unclear. The fact that he did this in cooperation with his counterpart makes it all the more suspicious. At face value, you can assume that Chamber did this because he sees it as something that he will benefit from, most likely from a financial standpoint. But what if he did it to prevent something even larger than all of us could possibly imagine? 
In our last video, we mentioned that Chamber's goals are considered his sacred truth, and that if he were to reach his goals, he might end up being painted as a villain. Could it be that Chamber chose to destroy Fracture being fully aware of the casualties knowing that it's the only way to stop a potentially bigger disaster? There's a clue that this might be the case. The terminal screen in patch 3.10 actually showed a reference to Homer's Odyssey, specifically the story about Scylla and Charybdis. When a Odysseus and his crew were passing through the Strait of Messina, they had to make a choice of either passing by Scylla, a six-headed monster, or Charybdis, a giant whirlpool off the coast of Sicily. Choosing Scylla would mean that he would only lose a few members of his crew, while choosing Charybdis could mean losing his entire ship. If we connect the dots, it looks like Chamber was faced with a similar dilemma and chose a lesser evil, even if it cost a few innocent lives. Looking at some of these maps, it's clear that the world of Valorant is in a far more advanced state than what we currently live in. So is it a utopia or a dystopia? With all the twists and turns the story is going through, Valorant just might end up being a dystopian society where their pursuit of technological advancement would lead to their ruin. However, the story isn't done just yet. There are plenty more secrets to uncover, and we'll be around to watch it all unfold. Let's just wait and see. Thanks for watching the video, that's all we have for you today. What do you think about Valorant's world? Do you think it's a utopia or a dystopia? Which maps hide the biggest secrets? We'd love to hear from you, so let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and hit that subscribe button for more awesome videos like this.